can you give your vehicle an alignment at home in your driveway just as good as a shop sometimes better yes let me show you how without all the common mistakes I see this right here is referred to the string method where you stretch string all the way around your vehicle um, give yourself a nice square box and then you're able to measure off of that and tell if your front tires are towed in towed out and same along with your rear but there's a lot of common mistakes that see people do and we're going to go over that. I'm going to go to the small scale model and show you what I'm talking about. So here we got our small scale model, a pickup truck. And what we're doing is testing toe in. And toe in is when both front tires toe in or toe out. And then you can do the same thing with the rear on front wheel drive cars. You know, this is a rear wheel drive car with a solid rear axle, but um, front wheel drive cars will have an independent rear suspension and well some rear wheel drive ones will too and they can also have toe in or toe out which is good and bad but we'll we'll go over that first thing you want to do is make sure your front suspension components are not completely worn out and generally why you're doing an alignment is because you've replaced something and now something's askew but what we're doing is pulling our vehicle in straight you want to make sure it's going straight into its parking spot on as level as ground as possible and setting it there. And then we're setting up four posts around it. Two in the back, two in the front. The first misconception is people believing so people believing that their front wheel track and their or the front wheel track and the rear wheel track are the identical, which a lot of times they aren't. Even though the vehicle manufacturer may make this, you know, uh, 63 inches up here and 63 inches back here if you ever put different calipers on the front or rear and the man and the aftermarket manufacturer has made them a 30 second thinner thicker or something else that'll change the width of your front and your rear axle so the first misconception with this method is that you can just take your strings tie them all the way around the vehicle and measure off the center of this wheel and the center of this wheel and then measure off the center and then you know say you got three inches here three inches here and then you just set these at three inches and three inches away from the centers of all your wheels is that you're square because you're not if your front one is actually narrower you'll actually get you know this is over exaggerated but you don't have a square box you have a box like this and so you automatically have toe in or something else to that effect so when you measure, if you put your wheel straight on with these strings, you're actually towed way in, which isn't good. So the first thing you want to do is set your box up so it protrudes behind your vehicle and in front of your vehicle. And this method works even if you have a vehicle with different sized tires on the rear than the front. So what we're going to do is set this up loosely around the vehicle. These bolts don't want to stay that gay. And they can protrude. You can have it zigzag this way a little bit that's not important you could have this bolt forward or more forward than that one that's not important but what we're going to do is once we get a protruded front to rear is we're going to measure the distance from here to here from this string to this string and we'll just say it's five and a half inches and up here we're going to shim this to be exactly the same five and a half inches so now these two lines are perfectly parallel with each other and then we're going to shim them to the vehicle. So we're going to start in the back and you're going to say this is uh, you know three quarters of an inch away and this one's only a half so we're going to shift everything over but now it messed up our lines so we're actually going to shift the front over as well and measure off the center of the front axles and you know say this one's only a quarter inch and this one's three eighths and we'll just keep playing but you'll have to do it quite a few times because when you move this in it actually moves the back in a fraction of them out. But you just keep doing it. It doesn't take actually that long. And until you get perfectly square, this is this is five and a half inches here, this is five and a half inches there. That's one of your most crucial measurements. And then your vehicle axle is centered in there that way. That's this way, and the front one's this way. And you'll probably find out that the distance between here and here, you know, let's say it's a Whatever you, and it's not that important what you set this up, but say you have three inches here and three inches here, you might actually have three and an eighth here and three and an eighth here. Um, and that's just fine as long as the measure up here is five and a half inches and five and a half inches or whatever the inches matter. Doesn't 
really matter. You're just making sure you have a perfectly square vehicle. Your vehicle is perfectly square in there. And so that helps out when your tires are way wider on the front because you can just measure center to center. But now we have a perfectly straight line all the way down, all the way down. So we're going to measure the distance from here to here inside of our wheel. So let's go out to the real vehicle and find that out. So everything's in line perfectly, um, lined, it, lined up beautifully with the car. But now I'll show you why, even with this vehicle, that specs is having the exact same track width. The front wheel space is exactly the same as the rear wheel space. Even though it's spec is being identical, it's not. This is what um, the back is. It is about an eighth, so the front's actually about an eighth inch, maybe three sixteenths narrower than the rear, even though it's spec exactly the same. So now what we're going to do is you just measure from a good spot on the rim. The steering wheel is as straight as possible when I pulled in, but we might have to tweak it a little bit. I pulled in on some grocery sacks, just doubled over on itself a whole bunch of time, made sure this concrete was clean right underneath. And you can see how easy a garbage bag allows me to move this. And what I'm going to do is a flat spot on the rim, not the tire. Don't measure off the tire because, I mean, there's lumps and everything on it. You know, you got letters and flat spots, non-flat spots, and it could bulge right there. You don't know. We're measuring on the rim. We're doing every measurement off the rim in the exact same spot. And what we're going to do is we're going to line up one tire and get one tire as square as possible. And I'm two and a half roughly right there and two and a half right there. So I got this tire squared, and if it's not, I can shimmy it with my hand a little bit. Don't worry too much about the steering wheel yet, but what I like to use is actually just a, a caliper. Just a cheap caliper works, because that lets me get really close, and I can dive it in against the rim, and bring my other, bring the, the piece up, and I can see. And I'm not actually looking at the gauge. I don't need to look at the gauge. But then I can see with the rope, with the string where I'm at. And I got this tire dead, dead on square with the string. So the other side, we can actually adjust. So in the other side, which is the same distance in the center away from the string, because everything's square, we can measure and touch the string right there. And so close to that string, but this gives me a great measurement of where it is. And so it actually is out just a little bit, which is a toe out. So both the tires, this is the front of the car, pointing out a little bit. And that's what you want. You want toe out to perfectly straight on a front wheel drive car because it's pulling and you can have them out. And as it pulls, it can, it'll bring them in just a little bit, the rubber itself on the tire. A rear wheel drive car, what you'll want is you want some toe in of about a sixteenth of an inch to an eighth of an inch because the front end is just pushed by the back end and that'll help it track and help the steering wheel go straight down the road. So and now from here what I can do is I can actually adjust the tie rod. I've already adjusted it, but it's back here. I can reach up, I can reach up underneath, adjust the tie rod. The tie rod right here is how you adjust it and this is what your steering wheel moves back and forth right here. And there's just a big nut right here that you'll just put your wrench on and loosen. So you just loosen this big nut. And then this center shaft that hooks to your uh, steering, to your rack and pinion, will actually, um, you'll just rotate that with another wrench. So you'll just rotate that around and that'll extend this, pushing the tire out, or contract it, pulling the tire in. And you just play around with it till you get to the, the measurement you need. But when you adjust the tie rod, it might actually push the tire on the other side. So what you'll do is you go over and you'll reline up the tire on the other side, square it up, and get everything exactly where it needs to be. The rear of the car, exactly the same. But now once you've done all this, what do you do when you're driving down the road and your steering wheel sits at an angle when you're going straight? Not to worry. All we do is loosen both tie rods, one on this side, one on that side, and we'll just rotate one up, the other one down, the exact same amount, quarter of a turn or whatever, to keep track. And that'll shift the front, do it again, shift it again, 
until you get it to where your steering wheel tracks straight down the road. Or if it doesn't bother you, just, just leave it. But most people, will, it'll bother them. And that won't mess up your alignment once you already have it set. Just remember, you want the center line of the string to be in the center of the wheel or as close as possible. Well, there we go. That tackles the most crucial thing to alignment, the thing that'll make your wheels pull one way. Um, when you're driving down the freeway, make your tires wear out in no time at all. That's toe in, toe out. There are other co a couple other things to alignment. There's a camber and there's caster. Caster's not so easy to adjust. Some vehicles aren't even adjustable. Some are, some aren't. Um, camber, uh, also most vehicles you can adjust camber. Some you can't, but that's the amount of that the tires actually lean in or out. Like the old Volkswagen Bugs you saw us driving down the freeway back in the, the 80s where people had lifted up the backs. Um, they got a ton of camber, and now the new Japanese vehicles, when they lower them down to the ground, the rims are just sticking out like that, catching rainwater in the rim. That, that's a lot of camber as well, and that's adjustable, and that's pretty easy. I mean, you can see it, you know, but you pretty much just put a, a metal bar on the rim right there and then stick a level to it, and you got these, these digital levels these days. Um, I'm sure smartphones could even do it these days, and you just see how much what angle it, you make sure your vehicle is on level surface but you just see what angle it is and you can adjust it usually there's a bolt you screw in and out and it pulls the top of the tire in or pulls it pushes it out and just make sure it's within specs specs aren't the easiest thing to find you'll find that out that's why you just kind of go off a rule of thumb when you're doing this in your driveway and that is you know front wheel drive vehicles you want roughly dead on or maybe a little toe out about a sixteenth toe out um, the rear end of the front wheel drive vehicle will have a little bit of toe in. Um, zero to six to a sixteenth toe in. Uh, rear wheel drive vehicles will have on the front end, they'll have about sixteenth, maybe an eighth of an inch toe in. Um, on the front and the rear, usually it's just dead on. Usually it's a solid rear axle. Some that are have independent rear, you can adjust a little bit, but most of them just they stay dead on. Um, thanks for watching. Hopefully this helps you out. Questions down below, thumbs up, go to Facebook. See you guys soon, bye. Now a slight variation will save you a little bit of time is the two by four method. And here I manually measure between this string and this string, in the front and the back. But then if I moved one thing, everything kind of got out. Something that'll save you a little bit of time is to take two identical two by fours and line them up perfectly with each other, draw a straight line across both, and put nails in the exact same spot here, and the exact same spot down here, and then you'll put a two by four at the front of the vehicle, and one at the rear, with the string wrapped around it, and that keeps the distance, this distance, identical. And so, when you're centering it, if you move the string one way or the other, it moves both the same strings at the exact same time, where if I moved one on this one, then I have to come over and move the other one the same. And there's a little bit more finickiness with the way I did it right here. The two by four method is a little, um, it is a little easier. So you can do the two by four method as well, but keep in mind that it sticks out and there's a greater chance of actually tripping over it and knocking your whole measurement off. And so usually I don't do the two by four method just for that, but it does make it a lot easier.